probably the most challenging part of this was to create a theatre within the theatre. Uh, we've taken the National Theatre and completely rebuilt the facade of the uh, proscenium. This is not part of the actual theatre. Um, this is built as a total facade and goes wall to wall, floor to ceiling and right across the top of the whole thing. A little gimmicks built in. The boxes themselves, uh, three people can stand in each box. Um, we have a special little escape hatch where the phantom can just quietly disappear. So the bottom parts of these are in fact doorways that uh, the phantom uses to escape. This is a reasonably simple piece, but it uh, is uh, motorised, it's radio controlled. Uh, and can uh, operate by somebody off stage, or has to operate by somebody off stage. But uh, the trick to this one is that um, when it's operating during the show, it's got lots of things to navigate. It's in very dim lighting, it's in um, dry ice fog, um, and Craig, who's operating at the moment, um, has had uh, a lot of practice with it, and he's highly skilled, but even so, every single night, he comes in early and practices and practices and practices these moves. Now that's the boat. Hello, I'm Sandra Davies. I'm the administrator of Clock Musical Theatre. I'm also the stage manager for this production of Phantom of the Opera. And I've been around Clock for some 30 years. For those people interested, especially all those lovely stage management students out there, this is our set of floor plans for the show. Um, Grant Alley, our technical director, uh, does all the floor plans on a CAD system, so every scene is marked out. And as you can see, every scene also has the crew who's responsible for each position in it. As well as that, once I finish my cue sheet, it's the way I do my cue sheet, I type it up and I actually put it on the corner here so every cue from that scene into the next scene is written. And uh, we rehearse at Clockworks, our warehouse, two weeks before we come into the theatre, um, both weekends. And uh, basically I teach the crew the moves and then the crew take it from there. They're a very accomplished team and um, they mould it to suit their needs as well. But that is the basic bible of the whole thing. This is one of the baby candelabra. Um, they're um, being developed such that uh, they push on from the wings and we have a, uh, a magical little push rod here which can roll up and uh, enables the candle to be pulled on and off and of course as it comes off we can roll up the handle. You'll also notice sitting through them is a wire. This wire plugs in out in the wings, it's into a trap here and at that point uh, they're then linked in through the whole lighting system and they're under the control of the other computerised lighting. This is the Phantom's Lair while we're dealing with all the same scene. Um, this is all on set on a truck. Uh, the truck itself as you can see is uh, quite big but quite movable um, and it rolls downstage through the fog. I won't take the lid off this at the moment because it's already been loaded. But you can see here is one of the pyrotechnics which has already been preloaded. Inside this box is a radio control uh, device for triggering it, which is all operated from the stage manager's corner. So there's pyrotechnics in the chandelier. There's in fact two different sets of pyrotechnics in chandelier. And one of our big cues just before interval is quite challenging because it starts with the pyrotechnics. This is the pyrotechnics box here, which fires off the pyrotechnics that we've got in the show for the chandelier, for the urns in the graveyard scene, and also in two other scenes. We've got pyrotechnics going off nine times altogether. I said there are a lot of chaos scenes. There are pyrotechnics happening, guns firing, people screaming, and your natural instinct is for your heart to race and you think something's wrong and you've got to run. But as a stage manager, you've got to stay totally calm, keep counting bars and call with cues. And that's something that was certainly challenging in the first couple of shows, to really maintain that cool and count and get all the cues in the right spot because they're quite challenging. The elephant. Um, and of course, this is a show within a show, so it is really a prop. 
But um, it was painted by, well, the, the cloth was painted by Chris White, who's a brilliant uh, set painter, and this was painted by Graham McGuffey, who's also a brilliant set painter. Um, both uh, gave their little contribution to it. Eventually, we turn it round, and there's the stage crew playing cards and uh, swilling coffee, sitting on the back of this monstrosity. So, he's designed to be looked at from both sides. The head, if I can uh, actually get him, actually uh, moves. And this is a Hannibal cloth coming in now. But what happens is it comes in and it keeps coming in. But as it, come, it keeps coming in, watch the left hand end of it. So the show starts with it looking like that, all crumpled. Here you go, we can see now how it writes itself. And up she goes. But of course it's only the tip of the iceberg. The real magic is seeing it all come together and all work. When you add the lighting, the voices, the scenery, uh, and all the effects, and particularly the cast. Um, this is a show you don't want to miss. It is the real magic of theatre, this show. So there's still opportunities to come and see it, particularly next Wednesday and Thursday. Don't miss it.